So, to understand better how computers reproduce sound, produce sound or process sound, uh, let's take a look at sound itself in its analog, fully analog form before any digital processing. So I hooked up an oscilloscope to a sound mixer here and let's take a look at a few uh, samples of real sounds. Uh, as they are represented as waves. Waves uh, are just a plotted representation of uh, any signal and this, in this case we're looking at, um, at sound signal obviously. So when we speak or play an instrument we cause the agitation or movement of air and that movement, that regular or more or less regular or ir completely irregular movement of air can be represented as waves on an oscilloscope or other instrument is just one of the uh, representations of, of sound. There can be many or more, but this one is easily represented as a uh, function of uh, signal and time and over time. And uh, okay, so let's, let's try and th this microphone is connected to the, uh, to the mixer and uh, at certain point in the uh, signal path we inserted the probe of this uh, of this oscilloscope so this is this gives us an idea of what human human voice looks like as represent when represented as waves uh, you see the sound waves that i produce are actually very irregular very rough uh, it's because of all the characteristics of human a human voice there's there's a lot to human voice there's how my vocal cords are shaped uh, what noise i i add if uh, if i drink water or uh, eat something before speaking i sound a bit different all that is represented as those uh, the, those uneven waves and all those uh, noises that we see here and all that constitutes um, a part of uh, my individuality and uh, that's how we recognize ourselves in the dark by our voices simply because we all sound different and if we try and make a more regular sound like the notes of, of a scale do re mi fa sol la si do do si my uh, singing is terrible and uh, apologies for the torture but let's see if i manage to produce the last sound i the last note i tried to sing was supposed to be c or or a if that worked i'm not so sure because i'm not a good singer unfortunately but roughly, you see the peaks of the wave that I produced are roughly 5 milliseconds apart if we look at the scale here. Uh, which means it's around 200-220 Hz, which is close enough to the sound A. Uh, if, uh, we had some, uh, if we had a professional singer here, they would probably be able to produce the exact uh, frequency expected for uh, uh, for the note A but uh, for the sake of experiment it worked so you see there's a regularity in the wave which is the free which is the uh, period of the wave and we can talk about the frequency of the wave it's they are both in the, in, in uh, interdependent the frequency is the inverse of of the period uh, so it can all be calculated and and we see that you know the, the longer the more sustained sound I am able to produce the more regular the wave is but this this wave still has many many regularities like from far away it looks pretty regular you know even almost close to sine wave but uh, if you look closely 
at it uh, it's very rough it has very rough shaped ed edges and it's, it's not a straight line at all let's see if we can do better meaning produce a cleaner line uh, using an instrument so let me switch to acoustic guitar now and let's try and play play a C major scale you see the waves look already already much closer to sine we can increase the scale here yeah, you see that's that's our note A Look what happens at the beginning when I pluck it first compared to when it settles down a bit. When I pluck it first, it's a, the, 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 the wave shape is much more complex. It's, it's almost as if multiple different waves were superimposed on top of one another. Which is actually what's happening because when we pluck it strong in the first place, like initially, there are many additional components to the bass sound. So there's harmonics being played, there's a, a vibration or, or response resonance from the other strings, from the, from the guitar body itself. So all that, all that is visible as a part of that signal. But after it settles down a bit, it, after we let it sustain for a bit, it is closer and closer to sine wave and if we freeze it we see that the period of it is around two uh, two and a bit milliseconds and we can take a screenshot of that to examine it later but it's much closer to the ideal uh, ideal sound uh, that we're after here. What if we try an electric guitar? <laughs> yeah, even cleaner sound. same happens the same happens as before first the sound wave is very complex but then it settles down it's closer and closer to to our expectations and let's go to a, all the way to a this is pentatonic scale so Yes, that's our A. Very nice. Very nice. Almost sign like. But we can do better and we can play harmonics. Harmonics on the guitar sound even sweeter, even more close to the ideal synthesized sound. So this is this is the second harmonic on the string A. Let's try the third harmonic on string D, which should correspond to the note A. Yes. And you see even from the initial plucking of the string almost from the initial plucking of the string we get we get the sign sign shape nice and there's more there's of course 
there's ton more to sounds. I uh, I'm not a musician and I'm not a sound engineer or none of this, but I'm, I'm just fascinated by what I see here. And it will help us looking at, at how sound is processed on the computer, but we can, we can even now observe several more things. Like if I do vibrato on the guitar, see how the frequency increases, decreases. And basically it's represented as, as, as the wave contracting or expanding. Break chord, chords, chords are always complicated waves. Enough of this. Uh, I could sit here and watch the waves all the time. Uh, probably uh, something's wrong with me. Uh, anyway, this is a good introduction uh, to what sound is and I think now we can uh, move on to our discussion to actual computer sound and we'll start with how computers tried to represent those complex waves first in a very primitive and simple manner using the PC, PC speaker uh, uh, which uh, came, uh, came about in, in around uh, early 80s and uh, which is I think still used in, in some PCs but uh, yeah it's been with us for a long time it's the simplest way, simplest attempt to uh, to represent sound using computers and uh, it will help us um, a lot it will help me understand um, understand uh, how more complex uh, sound cards work let's look at the PC speaker